my daughter, if you can hear me. I knew you would return as well. It's in your nature to protect the innocent. No, I really don't know. Damn it, bitch, I said let go! It's whack-a-doodle time. It is whack-a-doodle time. Uh, <laughs> monkey covering eyes emoji. Thanks. Say peacock and no one bats an eye. Say poopcock and society. Society calls me gay. Uh -oh. Hope everybody's having a great Pride Month. Shout out to. The gays. Does it feel good though? Yeah, I kind of feel dope right now. You look dope. <sighs> what was that? Breathing. Oh. It's all gonna be safe, and we're all gonna have a great time. What in the Jesus Christ was that? Let's see, let's see. Okay, okay. Angela. Catch me if you can, Mr. Holmes. Don't you dare disobey me, Coraline! Ah! Ew! Also, I don't know. Let's talk about gay rocks. I'm going to be doing a countdown of the top 10 gayest rocks in the world. Starting off strong at number 10, we have Coming Tonight. Why is that gay, you might ask? Because statistically speaking, lesbians are better at making women do that. Don't get mad at me, try harder. Coming Tonight is a kind of amphibole that happens when magnesium-rich rocks undergo metamorphism. It was named after the first place it was discovered, Covington, Massachusetts. Which coincidentally is not that far from the city with more lesbians per capita than anywhere else in the US. Northampton, Massachusetts. There we have it, the 10th gayest rock. I'm being featured in a documentary about grooming children. Happy Pride Month. As someone who was actually groomed as a young adult and is a survivor of sexual abuse and assault, it is such an out-of-body experience to see my face being used as someone who would do these deplorable things and to falsely claim that an entire group of people would do such horrible things just because you want an excuse to hate us is so dehumanizing. I want so badly to be making fun Pride content for you all this month, to focus on the joy that is being a 
trans person. But the reality for queer and trans folks right now is not sunshine and rainbows. I was assaulted last weekend and I woke up to my face being blasted around conservative Twitter a few days ago. And I have a lot of privilege as far as trans people go, being a thin, white, able-bodied person living in New York City. So instead of just waving a rainbow flag and buying a Target t-shirt this month, consider donating to Black Trans Mutual Aid Funds, Trans People Surgery Funds, support and stream trans music and buy trans people's art, cast trans people in your projects and hire us at work, support other trans content creators, and please contact your representatives about the over 550 anti-trans bills currently in circulation throughout the U.S. because it is one thing to claim to be an ally and it is another thing to show up for us when we actually need you. My name is Avery Wade and I am a trans man in Florida. I'm going to be very raw and open about this. I'm afraid. The new bathroom bill that they have passed uh, includes parks and beaches, anything that's owned by the state. If you don't know what the bathroom bill down here is, it is uh, a bill that states that you have to use your gender assigned to birth bathrooms. So here's the scenario that's going on in my head because the punishment is, I could be on a gig because I'm a stagehand and I work in public areas. I could go to my correct bathroom, which is the men's, and someone could clock me and call the police on me. Those police officers could then trespass me and put me in prison for a year. Which prison? I don't know. Maybe they'll make a special detention center for trans people. Which kind of reminds me of something that happened in World War II where they forced people to wear pink triangles. I'm leaving Florida because it is not safe here. And we do not have enough support. I'm going to leave and go to a state where I can be supported and come back and fight this war. Because I'm in enemy territory. I'm a trans woman living in East Tennessee, and most days when I am out in public, there are times when I need to go to the bathroom. Which is such a controversial issue for half the country, but we're just going to put a pin in that for right now. With a good bra and a clean face, I have passing privilege. And I understand that's kind of a terrible thing to say, but just bear with me for a second. As you would expect, I use the women's restroom. Because I identify as a woman, I look like a woman most days, so it all just kind of makes sense to me, you know? I don't need hate for this fact. If I gotta pee, I gotta pee, and I'm gonna do it in a place where I feel safe. But because I'm a trans woman living in East Tennessee, there is a significant risk for using the restroom in public. So I don't procrastinate, I don't dawdle, I don't hem haw. I get my business done, I wash my hands, and I get out as quickly as possible. No eye contact, no chit chat, head down, eyes forward, get out as quickly as possible. I don't need anybody's toxic testosterone trash can of a husband to come in there and decide to teach me a lesson and then pull me out by my hair. So you can imagine my surprise the other day when I was stopped in the restroom for struggling with the hand dryer. And you want to know who it was who stopped me? A child. An elementary school age child stopped me while I was struggling with the hand dryer. She did not reprimand me. She did not say I was in the wrong bathroom. She didn't even ask if I was a boy or a girl. This small child saw me struggling with the hand dryer because I was so stressed and anxious to get out of the bathroom and took it upon herself to teach me how to dry my hands. She stood there for almost five minutes showing me how to dry my hands, how to work the hand dryer, how to make sure that there was no water left anywhere. She was so thorough and you know what she didn't do? She didn't care what I looked like. She didn't care that I was trans. She probably could see that I was a little bit different than other women in the bathroom and she didn't care. She saw that I was struggling and she wanted to help. It was a moment where I realized two things. The next generation is going to be compassionate, patient and empathetic and willing to teach. And it made me realize that if I ever have any children of my own, I would wish to raise them to be just like that child because she was incredibly kind and patient to me. I would want my children to have those same types of values. As soon as the hand drying tutorial was done, I did book it as quickly as I could out of the bathroom because I did not want to stay in there any longer than I had to be because I was already stressed and freaking out. Half the country hates us, but there is still hope. And that makes my heart glad. <laughs> Transness has only been around for 29 years. Okay, baby boy, let's play. The US's earliest known trans advocacy group was in 1895, nearly 130 years ago. It was called the Circle of Hermaphroditos. Now, 130 years still isn't very long into human history, but it sure as hell trumps your 29 years.
So let's go back a little further and leave the US. In Italy, in the early 1800s, we see the appearance of the word feminiello. A feminiello described a person who was assigned male at birth, who lived their life out as a woman, and got married to men as a woman. But why don't we take it 400 years earlier than that? In the 1400s in Albania, we get the word bernesho, which describes someone who was assigned female at birth and wore male clothing and was a masculine person for the rest of their life. Let's go back 400 years earlier than that to the 1200s. In Egypt, a group of people known as the Mamluk would recognize female porn people with masculine traits and then dress them up as sons for the rest of their lives and they would be treated as men with male privileges and have wives. But let's go back 1600 years earlier than that in 400 BCE. In ancient Greece, there were people who lived androgynously as prophets and healers and they were called the Enri people. But let's go back even earlier than that, to as early as 7,000 BCE. Dating back to the oldest ancient history we have, we see depictions of people who either contain characteristics of both sexes or neither. And pretty much every region of the world with native peoples has a word for it in their culture. Dating back so far, we don't even know where it started. In indigenous Siberia, we get the word chuchi, which means trans or genderqueer. Mexico, with the early Zapotec and Oaxacan people, we get the mushe. They're called the bakla and the tag people of the Philippines. They're commonly called the sister girls and brother boys of Aboriginal Australia. There's quite literally hundreds of different names across Native American tribes. We now put that under the blanket term two-spirited, but of course respect anyone who identifies as something closer to their tribe. In South Asia, they were called the Hydra. And now you may be thinking, well, that's only a couple of peoples across world history. No, it's freaking not! Because I only have so much time here, I chose random dates from history, but there are so many groups of people with so many names for genderqueer, trans, even drag queens, non-binary, everything. They've been here the whole entire time! Here's the other thing, they never go away. They just go into hiding when someone threatens to hurt them. And that's what's happening before our very eyes in the US, and that's what we need to be stopping. Because the history of gender queerness is the history of humanity itself. Anyone trans watching this, please remember that in the earliest history, you would have been celebrated. You would have been considered a shaman, a religious leader. People would have looked up to you because you understood both sexes. So your ancestors are looking down on you and going, go little rock star. So yeah, kid, I have done my research, have you?